Hello, I'm John White. This is an evaluation channel where I give real honest appraisals on products. I guess many of you would have seen channels where they basically promote products and they have links at the bottom of their web page saying, you know, this is the winner. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say things as they are. If something is bad, I'll say it straight. The reason I have a strong view of this is I, I believe it's the honest way to do it, but also because I've been led down the garden path. This interview is to do with translators. I have lived in China for six years. I'm hardwired for speaking English and I've struggled. So here I'm going to give a brutal evaluation of different translators that I've tried. And I'm going to tell you of one which has passed the grade. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I forgot my disclaimer. Disclaimer, I don't earn one RMB from any of the products that I evaluate, give my appraisals to. They are the truth. What, what I state is how it is. So if you've got any complaints, you can come back to me and I'll probably ignore you, but that's the way it is. Um, a bit of background, I am a New Zealander, I've spent about six years in China, but I've really had difficulty learning the local language here. I found the people here very friendly and approachable, but quite often I stretch their tolerance levels when it comes to spoken Chinese. So here we go. Uh, when I realised that there are a few translators available, especially in the local sites like Tabao. I started looking at them and trying to do some sort of offline evaluation and uh, I found there, there were quite a few options. It's one thing that I really was wanting was offline translation. I didn't like to have to be online for two reasons. First of all, in my mind, I was thinking there's a bit of a delay in the internet. And secondly, because I spend some of my time in a village where there's no internet or very poor internet. I just wanted to have something which is fully self-contained. I don't have to pay a certain amount of money every year for a subscription. I just wanted something which was there in my pocket ready for using. So if I wanted to get a taxi and tell them I wanted to go to somewhere, I could tell them. So, okay, where to start? Well, I've got a lot of free translation apps on my iPhone. The appeal was, of course, the price, free. But none of them really satisfied my needs for just grabbing something out of my pocket and doing a translation. The best one I found was Microsoft Translate, but sometimes the lag is very bad, especially if the internet is poor. You don't want to say something into your phone and then have the person waiting and waiting and waiting while the iPhone either finds a Wi-Fi or, or the uh, phone network or tries to do something offline. It really is quite painful for the amount of time that it takes to do a translation. I've got quite a few translation apps. Um, I've got Translator, Say Hi, Was Trans, Translate, Baidu Translate. It's not bad, actually, Baidu Translate. Uh, but again, it needs to be online to work properly. They've stopped using Google Translate offline files. You can't currently download Google Translate offline, even with VPN. And it doesn't kind of work anyway if it's online at the moment, probably through political reasons, but uh, for whatever reason, it's not. Now, I wanted something very reliable. So I'm going to go from the beginning and what um, hardware translators I've used and let you know what worked and what didn't. Now, because I'm a tightwad, I decided to go to Indiegogo, which is a site which promotes projects, if you like. It's a funding uh, platform. I put money into Tragel, that's T-R-A-G-L. Uh, that was promising to be an amazing unit. Clips onto your ear. It's got a microphone that goes to the front. You can just wear it and talk like normal. They can... You know, the, the person you're talking to can talk like normal and you can correspond naturally. Well, um, after a couple of years, <laughs> that didn't quite eventuate. 
I demanded my money back and I didn't get it. So I started uh, rounding up the other sponsors of this project and I was seen as a troublemaker. So they paid me off and then cut me out from the, uh, the chat group. So I used this money that I had refunded to me to buy a couple of time kettle units. Now, many of you would have heard about time kettle because they're really heavily promoted. There's time kettle there. This is the M2. It's a really good unit, but being the sort of person I am, I'm going to focus on the negatives. <laughs> and cut to the chase because I'm pretty keen to show you the one unit which actually is amazing. Now, the M2 has got this style of uh, earplugs. They don't fit in my ears. This is the best I can do. If I move at all, it's out. They don't hold securely in your ears. Now, after I bought this M2, they started providing them with ear clips, silicon ear clips that go around your ear and fasten around these headphones. Now, I saw what they provided and I bought the same units here. I just bought it from Jabal. And um, yeah, it's true, it holds them in place. But after using them, you can't put them into their holders for recharging. They can't recharge. So you've got to have this separate case that holds these separate silicon clips so you can hold these in while you use them and then take it out and then unclip it, put it back into the put this into the case for charging, and then um, put the silicon clips into their case so you don't lose them. Um, well, I mean, I, sh I of course, I lost the first pair that I bought, so I had to buy another pair of the clips. It takes about five minutes to get everything sorted to take these out, pair them again with your phone, start up your software, and then it's quite flaky. These don't pair all the time. They sometimes, I don't know, they've, they've got an attitude. They've certainly got a character. I'll, I'll give that to them. So you take them out and you try and pair because if you clip the silicon clips on first and then put them onto your ear and then find you can't pair successfully, you've got to reverse the process, which is more time wasted. And then once you've got them paired, then you clip it and put them on. Um, now, the translation quality is actually pretty good. Um, I generally have it in listen mode um, because... In other modes, you've got to give the other earbud to the other person, and they've got problems because it's not going to fit the area, and so they've got their, they're holding it up here and not knowing what to do because until they do that, they can't have any instructions from you. Remember, they cannot speak English, so you've got a native Chinese person. What 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 do you do with this? You know, you know, do I keep it? Is it a gift? So if you go over that barrier and then you and you manage to get them to put it in the area. And it doesn't pair, then it's a nightmare. It's a real nightmare. I just wanted something which just worked. Um, so I generally use these in listen mode, where I put um, another a problem with these M2s is that you need to take both out. You can't just take one out. So you've got to take both out, pair them, make sure it's paired okay, select the listen mode on your phone. And then you put them in. Oh, then you clip on these silicon clips, and then you put them over your ear, try and adjust it so they don't fall out if you if you go like this. And then in listen mode, you can hear everything that's being spoken, which is half the battle, I guess. Um, I do know a little bit of Chinese, not really enough to survive, but enough to give general um, ideas to the person who's listening. And I'm really good at miming. <laughs> well, I've had to become good at miming. Um, so I generally use these in listen mode. Okay, now these are the M2s. Now very recently, Time Kettle brought out M3s. They are much better than these M2s, okay? For a start, they've got regular earbud type plugs so they can go into your ear canal. Um, for my ears, they're still not really good because if I go like this, they can still fall out. There's probably my problem rather than your problem because my ears are small um, i've still got the smallest um, silicon um, tip on them they come in three different sizes and i've got the smallest one on still they they fall out 
uh, it's because my ear can now start a little bit further in, and in, in the in the silicon tip doesn't quite go into my ear can now. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of people like me. I know one, one other person that can't wear the same earbuds because their ears just not the optimum shape which Time Kettle have nominated. Um, but okay, that aside, uh, the headphones are better. They you can use those just with one earphone in your ear and the other one's still on charge so that's an advantage if it runs flat i guess you can change them over but they last about six hours anyway on a single charge um, so that wouldn't be much of a problem the quality of the translation seems to, to be a little bit higher than the m2s um, which i guess is what you'd expect after two years of development um, yeah it's not a bad unit but still, why isn't it ideal for me? It's not ideal because it's still there's still no really easy way for me to do a two-way conversation. Um, the it, you, it can use the phone as the speaker, but everything that I say that is translated in, into Chinese also gets spoken into Chinese in my earpiece, and I find that quite um, well. What's another word for irritating? <laughs> aggravating yeah it's a, it's it, it's annoying it doesn't allow for free flow of, of thinking and chatting um so that's the downside um but to be fair the m3s are the best earbud type translator that i've tried now i'm going to go into um iflytech now i've got the iflytech is the version 3 iflytech i thought i had it with me but i haven't um, very good translator. Those are a handheld translator. You push a button to talk, and then you push the button for the other person to talk. It's not quite so natural and fluent, like you've got to go to and fro or pass the unit if, if they want to press the button and get their thrills that way. Um, but all in all, I think I'd prefer to have the iFlytech over the earbuds um, because it's so easy. Just take it out of your pocket and push a button and it's away that's that's all you've got to do so i fly tech was pretty high on my um on my list of uh, great translators um but let's focus on the negatives <laughs> actually i'm not a negative person but um i think it's fair for you to know because you'll discover them and you won't be told these things on the other videos which promote these products um first of all um, it's actually a positive turned into a negative. It's very, it's rounded and feels very comfortable. It's, it hasn't got many sharp edges, and so it falls out of pockets very easily. Um, and the first pair of iFlytech version 3 units I had, I lost. It just fell out of my back pocket. Okay, so I decided that wasn't going to happen again. So I, I bought some um, Apple... Um, what do they call them? They're the, these little stick-on units that you can tell where you can always um, see where something is. Um, I can't recall the name. I'm not a salesperson, but it's it's little round things that you they've got a sticky. You stick them on. Um, they look like a a, um, a miniature flying disc. Nothing, nothing fancy. And you stick them on somewhere and then you program it into your phone so it always knows where the unit is. And I stuck it onto the second iFly tech. Now, the reason I did that was because these iFly techs are very expensive, like really expensive. They're 3,000 plus RMB uh, from the cheapest sites here. I know 1111 is coming up and maybe they'll drop below that, but they'd never drop down much. So they're, they're a real premium price product really fast in translating. They don't take more than half a second. That's a really big positive for me. You you talk something and then you push the button and immediately it gives the translation. Translation quality is pretty good. You've got to be fairly close to the unit. But again, it's not a major problem. Um, so iFlytech is one of the products which, apart from the price, I, wasn't, I wouldn't hesitate to buy again. In fact, I did buy again. I bought a second unit. <laughs> And that got dropped onto a soft carpet floor from not much of a height, because I'm not a tall person. 
the also gentle drop and stop working. Actually, that's a point I should make too, because the M3, which I haven't got here to show you, I've got a, um, a time kettle M3, which I mentioned, but I haven't got it to demonstrate to you because that did a very gentle flow fall. It basically dropped on a mattress and it stopped working. So it's very delicate. Okay, just keep that in mind. Even if you like dropped it into your hand, it would that's how gentle it dropped. Or it might stop working. Very delicate. Maybe I got a dodgy one, but that's my experience with that. And I got a similar thing with the iFly tech. Um, very, very um it wasn't very robust. And I, I was very gentle with it because it's a very expensive unit. I don't like spending money. Now, the one translator that I bought recently and I do recommend is this unit here. It's the Yan Wu Yo. That's a Y A N W U Y O U. Uh, it's a 4G intelligent off, uh, sorry, voice offline translator. I bought it from Davao. Uh, or you can get it from Timor and other places as well. That's the box it comes in. Um, now this translator is actually really good. It's much cheaper than the iFlyTech. Um, it's got the sharp edges or sharper edges, so it's easier to hold and less prone to slipping out of pockets. It's quite a bit heavier too. Um, but the real appeal is this. If I was to use an earbud when I go shopping and then I want to talk to a shopkeeper, for example, um, I'd have to unclip the earbud, pair it with my phone, clip on my silicon clips, clip it over my ears, find it hasn't paired properly, so I've got to take it out, put it back, and then <laughs> when the earbuds don't pair properly, you've got to put them back into the case and then take them out again to go through the procedure. Uh, sort of like a starting procedure for an aircraft. But once you've got it successfully paired, then you've got to either give them an earbud or you go on spe um, a um, speaker mode using your phone. And it's just so awkward. But with a unit like this one here, you just turn it on, swipe up, and then you just ask the question, hello, how much are those apples, please? And it's done. They've got the message. And um, if they give the reply back, sure, Quay. Then they just give the reply back and it's easy. Sure, Quay. Um, my Chinese is not that good. But this is a really good in-your-pocket type device. And it's cheaper than the iFly Tech by a country mile. So this unit that I'd recommend, it also has the facility of doing smart recording, which means you can set it up and place it down and it records a full conversation in any language and does the conversion on the full conversation. Actually, it does it two ways. If you've got an English speaker talking on one side and a Chinese person talking the other, it seems to detect which language is being spoken and translates it all into English. It also has the photo translate, which is pretty cool. Um, so it's got a lot of good things going for it. And for a small, cheap device, yeah, and it's robust too, very strong, very well made. In fact, um, one negative, I guess I'd say, is that the buttons for doing the translation are a little bit firm to press. Maybe some people will be pushing it and thinking it's a little bit, something's wrong, but you just push it a little bit more firmly. But that might be just due to the fact it's built like a brick. <laughs> it looks like a brick. So their marketing is not very good. Their presentation is not very good. Um, they're, as a company, they seem to be quite um, quite active. When I contacted the company, I did it through the uh, some other app. I don't even know what the app is. Um, but I managed to fumble my way through to go to chat with the suppliers. Um, I asked them if they can make it so that the menu comes in English, where it's an option that is in the interface. But I asked them whether they could set it up because I've had other, even iFly Tech, this really expensive translator, that interface in many areas is still in Chinese. It's not perfect. But this one here is 99% perfect. There's only one menu thing, which is 
not in English. And that's one that is for turning this into a hotspot. But once you click on the icon, it gives everything else in English. So that's easily um, discoverable. You can find out how to do it. But it's a really good unit. It's very cheap. The speed of it is not as fast as iFly Tech. iFly Tech, it felt instant, but in reality, I guess it will be something like half a second. And this unit here is about a, a second. Uh, where I am at the moment, the internet is very poor. So a lot of delay will be due to that. But I can live with a one second delay, so long as I know that the translation is going to come unlike something like Google Translate or even Microsoft Translate, where the translation sometimes <laughs> never comes. Um, so all in all, a really cool product. I don't get anything, any kickbacks or anything from the supplier. I don't even know the supplier, apart from one short conversation when I asked them to send it in, uh, pre set up for English. But it's, it's, a, it's a pretty good unit, really. Uh, for those who can you can read Chinese, that's the back of it. It might mean something to somebody. Mm. So there we have it. It's an honest appraisal of the translator units that I've tried. I've actually tried a few that I haven't mentioned here, but they haven't been really flyers. They haven't really gone beyond the try a few times and then given up and, and discussed category <laughs> and it is frustrating not being able to communicate with people here but having something in my pocket which i use hardly ever but when you need translation is when you really need it and it's it's really you know it's, it's really straight to use without having to pair without having to plug things into your ears or anything and it's reasonable size you know it's pretty small it's a little bit shorter than the iFly tech actually the iFly tech is about that height there the iFly Tech version 3 that I do have, that's still being repaired. Um, I don't know whether it's going to be any better second time around, but I'll be um, probably a little more careful with it. <laughs> but it's kind of cool that I found something which is inexpensive and just does the job. And um, yeah, it's coming from me, John White, uh, with no kickbacks, no no special, uh, nothing, no, nothing at all. Just a suffering hardwired English speaking person who's having to do the best he can in China. So I hope you um, did gain from this video and can save a few dollars or a few RMB in buying a product that actually suits your needs. Um, yeah. uh, this is the first of several videos that I'll be uh, creating for giving honest reviews. Um, I was just thinking this morning, you know, I've got an electric toothbrush now, finally, which works the way I want it to work. And I'll give more details when I create this video. But basically, most people are being led down the garden path with regards to these ultrasonic brushes that vibrate at 31,000 times a second. Well, I'm going to give an honest review of what I've tried and the one toothbrush which has finally met my standards. Okay, we'll take care. Okay, bye-bye.